This video is brought to you by Captivating History. It's an oft-quoted historical platitude that history is written by the victors. The narrative of history is designed and shaped by those who come out on top, those who get to control how the story is told. As a result, the Carthaginian Empire story is often consigned to the also-ran category. Their tale is defined by their collapse and downfall at the Romans' hands. Yet, this narrative does not do justice to the empire's place in history. Carthage was much more than just an enemy of Rome. It was a thriving state, controlling much of the western Mediterranean, with its own culture and way of life, with a lasting impact on the region. The tale of defeat itself should be examined too, with at least some recognition given to just how formidable an enemy Carthage proved to be. The all-conquering image we have of the Romans was not necessarily set in stone, especially as the great warrior Hannibal threatened the very gates of Rome itself. With this in mind, let's dive a little deeper into the Carthaginian Empire. Carthage was located on the coast of North Africa in modern-day Tunisia, ideally placed to influence and control ships passing between Sicily and the North African coast through the Mediterranean Sea. Before the Punic Wars with Rome, this thriving port city was the largest, most affluent, and influential political entity in the Mediterranean. According to legend, the city of Carthage was founded sometime in the 9th century BCE by the Phoenician queen Elissa, better known to the world as Dido. The legend is most notably told through Virgil's Aeneid, in which Dido was allegedly fleeing the tyranny of her brother Pygmalion. She landed on the coast of North Africa, and established the city on a high hill, later known as the Bursa. She was allegedly told that she could claim refuge on as much land as an ox hide could cover. Outwitting the local chieftain, she cut the hide into strips and encircled the hill for her people. The city grew considerably after Alexander the Great decimated Tyre in 332 BCE, after which many refugees fled to Carthage. Alexander spared many of Tyre's wealthiest inhabitants, who, in turn, brought their prosperity to Carthage and made it the new center of Phoenician trade. This, along with favorable trade deals with tribes in the interior and the considerable farming skills applied to fertile land, allowed the city to flourish and thrive, expanding into the power vacuum that Tyre had left behind. Advances in agriculture and fishing allowed huge crop yields for exporting. New extraction techniques for metals allowed the Carthaginians to make the most of their resources, converting these to in-demand luxury products. The city-state had soon expanded its influence across North Africa, with tribute and tariffs regularly increasing the city's wealth on top of the lucrative business coming through the port. Whereas previously Tyre had imposed only economic control over its trade empire, Carthage instilled a cultural hegemony over its areas of influence making it look more like a conventional empire. An example of this would be spreading the Phoenician Punic language, clothing, and some customs. However, the Carthaginian government did not impose direct control over its new colonies, instead governing through treaties in a relatively hands-off manner. The city's harbors were immense, with 220 docks to facilitate trade and house its supreme navy, a symbol of the military might it now possessed. Its navy was state-of-the-art, making use of cutting-edge techniques involving mass production hitherto unforeseen, producing a fleet unrivaled at the time in its size and power. The city had all the exquisite refinements of any great ancient city, a theater for entertainment, temples for religious observances, a necropolis, and bustling marketplaces. With legendary wealth, the city merchants built exquisite six-story apartment buildings, designed exuberant gardens, and sponsored intricate artistic endeavors, making the city affluent and beautiful. This emphasis on the accruement of wealth, backed up by the threat of military actions, is emblematic of the Carthaginian Empire's raison d'etre. They wanted to preserve trade routes and expand without getting too involved with each region's internal politics. This ambition to expand naturally led to conflict, with Carthaginian forces engaged continuously in skirmishes with rival factions for influence. The most important battleground for influence turned out to be Sicily, 
the spark that ignited the Punic War's long struggle. Around 275 BCE, Rome had acquired the position of protector of Italy. It wanted to protect the eastern half of Sicily from further Carthaginian expansion. Carthage wanted control over the whole island to complete the chain of island posts by which it controlled the western Mediterranean. The result was the First Punic War, the first of three defined periods of war between Rome and Carthage. Warring continued between 264 and 241 BCE, both sides fighting costly naval battles. The ultimate result of this first conflict was that the Carthaginians eventually sued for peace, relinquishing control of Sicily, thereby losing considerable influence in the Mediterranean trade network. The Carthaginian Empire's potential weakness, plus resentment on both sides, meant the peace was fragile and perhaps bound to be broken. Between the First and Second Punic Wars, Carthage rightly suspected that Rome would look to exert more authority. Hamilcar Barca, father of Hannibal, set about forming a new base of power in Spain to exploit resources and prepare for another showdown. The catalyst of the Second Punic War lay in Hannibal's attack on Rome's ally, Saguntum. This was judged to have contravened a treaty between the two, but the act was too popular with Carthaginians to disavow. War seemed inevitable. By this time, the Romans had dominion over the sea, forcing Hannibal to consider a daring and arduous journey over land. With 40,000 infantry, 12,000 cavalry, and a contingent of war elephants, Hannibal traveled through Gaul and over the Alps into Italy. This incredible feat had been made possible by the loyalty Hannibal commanded, drawing together a wide array of men under his effective leadership. Elected leader at only 26, Hannibal seemed to have a tremendous personality, shown through the rapport he had with his forces. Known as the father of strategy, he pioneered the idea that wars could be won without fixed battles favoring ambushes and guerrilla tactics. His encirclement of Cannae in 216 BCE is a famous example of military prowess, in which there were upwards of 50,000 Roman casualties. Unfortunately for Hannibal, he received limited support from Carthage and had to muster provisions for his armies independently. His forces were never strong enough to attack Rome itself, though his proximity to Rome is immortalized in Cicero's phrase Hannibal is at the gates. In 203 BCE, Italy was finally cleared of Carthaginian troops, and the Second Punic War ended in complete triumph for Rome. While the Carthaginian political influence never recovered from this defeat, its commercial interests revived in the 2nd century BCE. This continued perseverance on the Mediterranean stage led to the famous conviction expressed by the Roman statesman Cato the Censor. Carthago es delenda, meaning Carthage must be destroyed. And so it was. By 146 BCE, the Romans had razed Carthage to the ground, bringing about the downfall of the once great empire and paving the way for its own continued dominance in its place. Although we end with their defeat, we must reflect and dwell upon the Carthaginian Empire's legacy in its own right. The Carthaginians played an integral role in transferring goods, ideas, and culture throughout the Mediterranean, contributing to a kind of cosmopolitanism in the classical world. They were tolerant in their rule, allowing colonies to retain most of their practices in return for submission. While the empire was built upon a priority to make money and generate trade, we should explore further the culture and art that the Carthaginians created and disseminated. Unfortunately, the evidence we can draw upon is limited. The archaeological ruins of Carthage, just outside Tunis, leave many questions unanswered for historians. But what we do have shows that Carthage deserves to be given attention as a prosperous and complex ancient empire in its own right, going far beyond the Romans' mere defeated enemy. To learn more about the Carthaginian Empire, then check out our book, Carthage, A Captivating Guide to the Carthaginian Empire, and its conflicts with the ancient Greek city-states and the Roman Republic in the Sicilian Wars and Punic Wars. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.